Felix and Tony. Today and welcome back to another episode of On the Trail with Felix and Tony. I'm Felix Camacho, candidate for governor in this upcoming 2022 election on November 8th. We've got only a a few more days to go. Mm -hmm. And with me every week and every moment on the trail is my running mate, Senator Tony Ada. Sir. Off a day. Off a day. I love the hat there, Gov. Glory days, not gloomy days. One of my favorite hats. I mean, what can I say? So where did you get it at? Well, um, there's a guy named uh, Dr. Manuel Johnson, and, and this is his theme. And I just feel that, uh, hey, if there's anything, this, this hat is, uh, the words are anointed, you know. So uh, It's great. Yeah, it's, glory days. That's what, we have days. To, that's what we always have to look for, it is the, 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 gl- the glory days. Absolutely. That's well, what the people of Guam are looking for. So this week on the trail, uh, a lot of things have happened over the past week, mm-hmm. and it, it's just great what we We've just had a, a tremendous week this uh, this past week. So we had the red hat canvassing in Derido. Uh, at the same time, imagine that our our team was working the early voting down at GCC. So we had a group down there at GCC, mm-hmm. and we had a group uh, that was canvassing up in Derido. Uh, then we had the action pack interview on Tuesday. How did, how did you like that? That was with uh, Phil Letty. I thought I thought it was really good. Um you know the fact that you've got a political action committee that was interested in speaking not 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 only to us but to the other our opponents and mm-hmm. uh, giving a fair play, fair uh, equal level playing ground to speak about the issues, and uh, hopefully people could listen to that and, and make comparisons and decide who would you want to lead over the next uh, four years. Right, and then early Wednesday morning we drove down to Malolo, mm. and we were down there at six fifteen in the morning to greet the 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 villagers of Malolo in Arahan and welcome them to you know a good sunshine morning mm-hmm. uh, that was uh, quite early well if anything uh, I enjoyed the ride down there and um, the weather the clear skies the hospitality of um, of the people down in, in Arahan and Malolo was uh, incredible uh, wonderful empanada thank you Dan for bringing that uh, to us that really woke us up but uh, the honks, the waves, and again, just uh, it always brings me home. My mom and my grandmother, then Margarita and Duenas from Inarahan. So it brings us back to our roots. And thank you again to the people of, of the Inarahan. And then we went to the other side, if you will, right? That's right. That went evening. to Meleso that evening. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, uh, greeting the, the folks as they came back home that evening. Mm-hmm. Uh, it started to rain. So we, what did we do? We, we went to go visit some some residents down in Malolo and Ike Maritzo, uh, Malesso. Let's mm-hmm. say it right. It's Malesso. Right. So uh, and uh, it was just such a fantastic evening, uh, being down there at the at the beach side and wow, that that was such a, a great time. What what was special to me is the fact that we had met with uh, Manamco, and uh, <clears throat> these individuals go back to my father's time back in, into the 70s and the stories that they shared about uh, the political events you know 50 years ago 50 plus years ago in the 1970 election and even in the 1974 election when my father was running for re-election uh, as governor and the short uh, the stories they shared especially i liked uh, one one uh, gentleman who who talked about the fact that he says, "I killed a cow for your father, and uh, we really had a feast." You know, can you imagine <laughs> that? It was absolutely terrific. But you know, I guess that's the campaign way yeah. back in the seventies, right? Yeah, uh, they they went all out for, for mm-hmm. campaigns, and you know how how much has changed. Where uh, it was door to door canvassing, it was uh, pocket meetings. I mean, yeah. now you know it's social media and uh, newspaper prints, uh, TV ads, and things mm-hmm. like that. So. You know how time has evolved and uh, campaigning has really, uh, campaign strategies has really changed throughout the years. True, but don't you think that the most memorable events uh, for us during the campaign are meeting the people Mm -hmm. at at their place of work or on the streets and and, uh, wherever they may be that we run across them and and just having that conversation and uh, getting to meet them, know who they are personally, their, their life story, what's going on. To me, those are the ones that really uh, matter most to me. 
whether they um, agree or not with us or um, say they're going to vote for us, just the fear, mere fact that we can we can uh, have a conversation with them. You know, the way God made us is we're relational. Uh, mm -hmm. God, we are relational relationships uh, and and as social beings. We we um, it's it's just part of our DNA, and so I love it. Yeah, and getting yeah. together after several years of not uh, mm -hmm. being able to uh, social gather and things like that, it made it even more special this uh, this election season. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, you know, I, I have to say, man, that's I just love to see you every day, too. You know, just being able to get with you and, you know, start the day off with a good joke and a, a nice laugh, and then we go on, you know. It's a, it's a roll. You know, <laughs> laughing is always healthy, right? And, and I think that's that's the, the, the greatest part of, of, of life is there's uh, everything that you— you can control just about everything in yeah. life, right? What you're going to do, how you plan things out, what you what you don't want to do. Yeah. But there's this one particular thing you cannot control, mm -hmm. and that's waking up. So once you wake up, that's the blessing. All the blessing starts then. Yeah. And everything else now become you can put into perspective and plan your day out. So that's why, yeah. you know, you always just have to look at life and say, man, I Thank you, Lord, for waking me up today. Mm -hmm. And now this is what I'm going to set out to do. Well, my my the first thing, uh, first prayer out of my mouth is, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. Amen. So let's move on, brother. There, and then we had the uh, the meet and greet with the mm -hmm. GTA employees. It was such a wonderful time meeting them again. Mm -hmm. You know, they always invite uh, candidates back to GTA uh, yeah. year after year to, you know, meet and greet the the candidates as they they um, go through the election season and uh, sitting with them and talking with them it it really made so you know it, it was that hospitality again over mm -hmm. there that they they provided and giving us that that forum to to talk to their employees and that time to to meet with them yeah it was really great and they offered the opportunity to both camps yes. so it's good uh -huh. yeah I think the the Democrats had the day before and then we were Thursday and then the great debate prep. Mm -hmm. Thursday evening, we went to UOG to uh, uh, find out what the rules and regulations yeah. and the preparations would be for the great debate that was supposed to happen November 3rd. Mm -hmm. um, as we all gathered into the conference room, the uh, you know the, the cohort, they were just so saddened when they had to tell us that the debate was canceled. I, you could tell that uh, even <clears throat> it was very, they were very timid in saying that the event is canceled due to a couple of events and we just felt that no need to press them on okay what were those couple of events yeah i uh, you know i believe we felt at that moment just let it go but what struck me most was the fact that uh they were deflated mm -hmm. uh they were saddened um they were really depressed i think about the fact that this had to happen uh, remember, uh, the great debate happens once every four years in, in a gubernatorial election. And, you know, in talking to one uh, former student that was very much involved in the master's program that typically uh, cohorts and, and sponsors this event is pointed out that, you know, we um, we lost a lot of money on this. Said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, the, the proceeds that we make from the ticket sales and the concession stands that, that are there, and of course, uh, whatever else may come with it, there could be some advertisement fees and the like, but, uh, you know, so the monies that are garnered from this mm -hmm. are very much pay for many of the programs that they would have and for their organization. Um, on our side alone, it was uh, $7,500 worth of tickets that we had uh, paid for, and they had to return that check. Imagine the other side. So we're talking minimum fifteen thousand dollars alone just on ticket sales that the student body and this uh, master's program had to forego mm -hmm. with the cancellation of it. But beyond the financial part of it is really the fact that they had put a lot of time and effort and planning into it, and uh, then it was canceled. Again, as I said, never could I imagine that this would happen. Um, so uh, the snub again against the the students and what had been planned for. Um, was there. Yeah, I mean, they worked yeah. tirelessly for mm -hmm. months. I mean, the the, the prepping, the planning yeah. uh, started since March of this year, and, you know, all the months that have gone by, they're, you know, putting things into into uh, into place and, you know, getting the, the necessary, uh, uh, what they call it, uh, 
resources that they needed to have, mm -hmm. the tickets that they printed. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it was really, it was, uh, it was a sad moment for them and us, us as well. And, you know, I, I think we left all options on the table for them to, to consider. Yes, we, we asked for, w would you be willing to do a town hall, e even if um, the two camps wouldn't come together right. and, and in a debate-type setting or a forum, but uh, let each camp come separately and answer questions that you had, uh, would like to pose. Um, but I, again, I, I, I believe they, they were just so uh, deflated, and uh, the wind was taken out of their cells. They're like, nah. Um, it, it, it just felt that, I don't know where the pressure came from, but it didn't feel right uh, for them. Uh, I, and even in my mind, was it really their call? That's what I was wondering. But we'll leave that at that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll just move on. And yeah, we're yeah. starting off now with uh, clearing the record. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first uh, item on clearing the record is the PDN article about the hospital and uh, the build to build it. So, you know, I, I got an email from Steve Limtiaco from the Pacific Daily News. Mm -hmm. And it should be going up on the uh, screen, the bill. Um, he goes, uh, good morning, Senator Ad. I have a question about the new hospital and medical complex. Last year, you voted for the bill which authorizes the governor to acquire the $1 billion project, $1 billion project. But during one of your campaign podcasts last month, you questioned whether the people of Guam can afford to pay for it. Why did you vote for it if you think the people of Guam can't afford it? Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, you know... It was not a matter that the headline article on, on PDN was, uh, I believe it was at it changes, you know, changes his mind. Right. And, uh, you know, it wasn't me changing my mind on the bill because I support the bill. It's the governor changed the project. So when you look at what the bill entails. Yeah. Can we can we put the bill up on the on the screen? Uh, go down where it. Keep going down. That's just the letter, and you gotta. Oh no, this is. I think this is this a different is, bill. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's this a. Is the, this is the bill. Yeah, you can get the correct bill up there. This one, right? Yes. Okay. So you can go ahead and scroll down. Okay. Got to change our producer. <laughs> <laughs> So what the bill calls for you go ahead keep strolling down so when you look at the, the when you look at the bill the the cost that was in uh, that was placed into the bill was over seven hundred million dollars about seven hundred million dollars and then it also calls for the um the uh three hundred million would come from the a r p funding and currently i think a r p only has about one seventy that's reserved for for the uh, for the hospital, yeah, there you go. So it goes uh, three hundred million dollars from the American Rescue Plan to construct the new hospital, and then when you go down, it says facility would cost an estimated seven hundred forty-three million dollars. So that's nowhere close to a billion dollars. And then when you keep going further down, and you said tax credits to be reimbursed to Guam at an estimated $60 million annually, of which an estimated no more than $35 million would be allocated for the payments of the leaseback agreement annually. So where that was coming from is the earned income tax credit. However, that is no longer available on the table, that $35 million for uh, EITC for the hospital. And last but not least, when you look at uh, where it's going to be built, it says there that the hospital has to be built on property that is already in Gov Guam um, in, in Gov Guam inventory. So you can keep going down. Yeah. Uh, slow down. I think you have to go back up there. Back up, back up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. So they said Govgum Guam property would be to the contractor developer. So it has to be already Gov Guam property and Eagles Field is not Gov Guam property. And uh, you know, I just want to make sure that there there's complete understanding of the two differences. Uh mm -hmm. public law um thirty six fifty six, right? Thirty six yes. Thirty six fifty six is what I co sponsored and voted for. 
and the governor's project is totally different from what 3656 calls for. Mm -hmm. So the two are, are not even the same, one of the same. And, you know, I hope that, you know, in the future that when they look at publishing an article that they would look at the bill as it is and what the, the current uh, uh, project that they're looking at Eaglesfield entails. Uh, and then, you know how they always say the details are in, you know, <laughs> yeah, we don't, but we didn't want to say that. We just say, you know, in the details. <laughs> Look at the details. <laughs> yes. the bubbles in the details. There, there you go. The bubbles are in the details. But uh, no, with that said, I, I just want to make it absolutely clear. Do I support building a new facility within the parameters of uh, Public Law 3656 that we, that we in the legislature voted for and approved and passed and the governor signed into law? and not the project that the governor is calling for at Eagles Field, which is going to be over $1 billion. So, clear the record. Clear the record. <laughs> clear. Clear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like that. that really. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I, I know that uh, also our opposition had um, run an article uh, about saying under Felix's administration, the... Um, there was a 6% business privilege tax mm -hmm. under your administration. And um, I do want to call, recall a, uh, a letter of transmission from myself and Lieutenant Governor Kaleo Moylan uh, back in the day. And, it, it, and again, it, as, as it reads, it is, um, you know, again, an act, I'm sorry, an act to roll back effective April 1st, 2004. This is a letter? Yeah. yeah, the temporary increase of the gross receipts. Mm -hmm and use tax rates. And it was a rollback really from uh, six to four percent. The, it, it, we talked about how for more than a year um, the people had been asking the Guam legislature to reconsider its action that it had previously taken to increase the GRT from four to six percent. Uh, it was a basically a fifty percent increase. And um, there, there, of course, was a, a lot of resistance from it at that time. The uh, late speaker, the late Ben Pangalinan was speaker of the Guam legislature. The Guam Chamber of Commerce had come out very um, vocally and very loudly uh, and, and demanding uh, the rollback for it. And so in, in coordinated, coordinated efforts with uh, both the Chamber of Commerce, the business community, and the people of Guam, we, we had submitted the letter and transmitted the bill number uh, 267, and it, it was eventually passed. And so I just want to clear the record again. In fact, um, you know, I, I, I believe uh, it had cost the speaker his election, uh, that coming election in um, later on. It had uh, cost him his election, I believe, in 06. So it was, um, again, a matter of clearing the record that we had fought to roll it back from six to four percent so again just fact checking and claiming the record <clears throat> that um, we did effectively roll it back and it's certainly something we are going to look at again um, coming in as an administration to roll back from the business privilege tax as it's referred to now from five to four percent i do recall that when the business privilege tax was increased from four to five percent mm -hmm. that it was a temporary, temporary. Um, uh, a temporary increase because of the Trump tax cuts mm -hmm. that would would be able to assist the the local coffers, our you know our local government in keeping the revenues uh, at a certain level. That was supposed to be sunsetted after a certain time. Mm -hmm. That the governor said it's going to keep the BPT at five percent forever. Yes, and true to her word, she kept it at five percent from the time she came in. To this very day, have there not been attempts by the Republican minority yeah. to uh, introduce legislation and, and effectively roll it back? However, uh, the attempts, are, from what I understand, have been unsuccessful, mm -hmm. as the Democratic majority would not allow that to happen. Right. Okay. So m many attempts have been made to try and roll it back. So hopefully, that you know, we'll be able to uh, get in there and start the process in rolling back the uh, the BPT. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, last on clearing the record. Glad, glad we cleared that one up. So the last one now is the, uh, th there was an article or an interview mm -hmm. from, uh, that you did with Nestor Lacanto. I think you did two interviews with him, right? One was at the 
the driving range. You, you oh, yeah, hitting a bucket of uh, golf balls. Yeah, and then yeah. the other one was down at our uh, campaign headquarters. Yeah. And um, we, uh, I think uh, the issue there was about uh, GRMC and the headline. Do you have the headlines, uh, uh, Mr. Producer? This one? <laughs> there you go. That That's the headline. Okay. Yeah. Let me, let me pop it up real quick. And we'll be right back. The Camacho Ada approach to reviving Guam's economy stands on our seven pillars of opportunity. Business development is central to our platform. Tony and I are both businessmen who know the role that government should play in encouraging and supporting economic growth. For more information on how we will help our economy rebuild and prosper, please visit CamachoAdaForGuam.com. Taking care of business and opportunity, this will be a new season. I'm Felix Camacho. I'm Tony Ada. We approve this message. And now back on the trail with Felix and Tony. Okay, and that's from PDN again. So, yeah, and so it, it says that um, they can coexist. That's certainly the the situation right now. Mm-hmm. But um, I believe that you know we need to consider all options. Not that GRMC is for sale, but um, it, the 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 concept of uh, the government of Guam looking at other facilities is um, very apparent. The current Guam Memorial Hospital Authority facility was at one time the Catholic Medical Center, privately owned by the Archdiocese of Aganya. And I believe with some federal funding and assistance uh, as the existing uh, GMH at that time, which was at Oka Point, actually it was right across my house uh, yeah. you know, uh, where I grew up as a kid. Uh, I grew up there in uh, in Paresville, Timoning in Oka. And uh, my mom, in, in fact, was a medical laboratory technician, and I recall riding our our bicycles there to check on mom once in a while while she worked in the lab. You know, yeah. it was a short bike ride away, but uh, with the destruction of Ky- Typhoon Karen and uh, uh, eventual failings, I guess, of the structure, it, it, it eventually the government of Guam bought, closed that down, and then bought the uh, Catholic Medical Center. So it's not far fetched because it already happened with the existing facility, which was at one time the Catholic Medical Center. Yeah. I think it was called, right, uh, MCM, Mary, uh, Medical Center of the, the Marianas. Marianas yeah. yeah, owned by the Archdiocese Ar- of Yeah, Kenya. owned yeah. by the Archdiocese. Yeah, oh, man, I remember that yeah. that name. And so, um, you know, we as, as far as where and what uh, to do, I believe that the focus has to be on, I know the current governor is looking at a long-term um, massive facility, one one um, one facility to in, in, to be inclusive of not only the hospital but other services, in one site and location up in Eagle Field in Ma- Manila. I know that there's been a lot of uh, pushback and resistance from the medical community. Uh, there's been a lot of pushback from the original landowners who mm-hmm. say, uh, Governor, even though you are proposing a land bank, that um, the government of Guam would purchase the land from. Uh, and basically pay the landowners for it. Um, this is certainly, their argument is, first of all, why would the government pay when it was the federal government that took it and ought to uh, adequately compensate it? But the main point that they were talking about in the oversight hearing with the Ancestral Lands Commission was that we don't want the money. We want our land back. And the Manamka were saying, the only thing I have left to give my children and my grandchildren is the inheritance that should be theirs. It would be the land where they can eventually build a house and raise their families, just as we once lived there and uh, and farmed and lived off the land. Uh, and so it, it is a very sentimental um, issue, and it would be a matter of inheritance. It's not about the money to them. You, c- you can't buy that inheritance. And so there is pushback on there. The medical community has said uh, that location is um, you must consider that over the decades where, where GMH is and the old uh, house hospital was at Onoko Point, we have um, built and uh, live in close proximity. All the ancillary services are close by. And um, to relocate it uh, to a very distant place up there without adequate infrastructure at this point is um, something that really needs to be thought about. And so... We, of course, are not privy to any studies that have been commissioned by the government. Perhaps I understand under GIDA, Guam Economic Development Authority. Let's see what they, what they have to offer. But um, the immediate problem is now, what are we going to do with the 
for example, the maternity ward. Um, it really is what's called the Maternal Child Health Service Line, uh, otherwise known as the maternity ward, but it is inclusive of um, the OBGYN ward, the labor and delivery section, neonatal intensive care unit, the pediatrics intensive care unit, and the general pediatrics ward. And, um, you know, in in talking with, with individuals that... Uh, that know of GRMC and, and their facility, can you imagine a hospital within a hospital? And what I mean is, and th this again, this is all conceptual, but um, there have been a lot of talk. I think Dr. Shea had uh, very adequately pointed out the, the shortcomings um, and uh, problems, even with the toilet in the maternal, mm -hmm. maternal ward. Um, but I believe that the ward up at uh, GRMC, there's about 28 uh, beds in, in that facility. Um, it's not exactly vacant, but um, with a minor movement, uh, it can accommodate. And so the concept would be a hospital within a hospital. And um, GMH could possibly lease the space and supply their own staff of uh, from EOB, GYN. GRMC would provide the wraparound services, uh, lab, radiology, housekeeping, uh, dietary, uh, pharmacy, security, ex etc. And um, the the idea that we have would be that if there is a need to repair GMH, again, there that um, maternity ward, you've got to move it somewhere mm -hmm. so that it would be functional. So why not there? So you you would use the available space or accommodations that are at GRM, GRMC, move the, the facilities and the services there, and then begin the work within the existing GMH facility and, and do the proper repair. It's the same concept uh, that we did with the schools. That's right. Where we, we, we um, mm -hmm. moved the students from JFK. Uh, initially, they were at GW, then we moved them into... Uh, Tizen. Tizen. That's right. Built JFK. Once it was done, we moved them in. We took then until on middle school, and uh, move the students there while they were doing the upgrade and repair uh, for okay. their facility there in Bergara. Uh Eventually, of course, it was turned over into um, the Guam. Uh, th it, they've got the uh, Guahan uh, Trades Academy, or rather, the charter school. Right. Um, and then, of course, Tizen High is up there now. Yeah. And that, so, that's the type of concept that yeah. is, you know, thinking outside the box of yeah. actually building or renovating and uh, mm -hmm. repairing the maternity ward at Guam Memorial Hospital while still keeping the services going for our people over at GRMC with yeah. our with our GMH staff and um, you know so to use that phrase coexist absolutely a yeah. hospital within a hospital, a hospital. yeah yeah that, that's great you know uh, and these are just some of the thoughts and outside the box thinking that that we we have and must consider yeah. And we will always consider any, you know, anytime someone brings up an idea or a thought that, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, like you said, right, we don't always have all the ideas. And this is how we can come together to ensure that things for our community and our island can be better uh, explored when we have the people who are the experts in those those fields that can come to us and, you know, talk with us. And, you know, we get the word out and we continue to move forward. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's just. It's just something that where all these things have been, you know, falling out on into GMH, where we have um, now these these articles that are, are coming out mm -hmm. on on what's going on with the the collections, you know, the uh, the yeah. billing collections at Guam Memorial Hospital. I mean, you've seen it floating around in social media. Mm -hmm. You see it. Uh, I mean, even on my my WhatsApp, I get so many WhatsApp that uh, it's it's just constantly coming in what's going on what's going on with the hospital mm -hmm. um, collections are are going really uh, people are so many people are involved with this this collection uh, mm -hmm. problem I guess that it's is they're having up there yes um, certainly we don't want to delve into what we all call conspiracy theories right. uh, this close to an election mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the word is out there about uh, a lot of concern of what's going on and um, the amount of monies that are being paid out for, um, again, GMH, which has always been financially struggling. Uh, so, 
Yeah. Okay, we'll move on. And the topic of the day today is the get out the vote. We were supposed to have Annette and Joanne join us today, but, uh, you know, I'm, and Mr. Producer sent me a note. He goes, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to tear that up. <laughs> I'm going to tear that one up. That, because you know. Because you know. <laughs> <laughs> today was an exciting day for us. Yeah. We had two things going, actually three things going on. And I think uh, we were, everyone was able to really be at different places all at the same time. We had our people down in, in, in Melissa for mm -hmm. the early, uh, for the uh, satellite voting. We had our people up in Jigo canvassing. And we had our people at Tumuning getting our site ready for our rally. Yeah, I, I understand it's a really special day tomorrow. Yes. You know, we got the rally going on, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you talk about that? Uh... So it's going to be a very exciting day tomorrow. Uh, we're going to start out. Each village leader actually is going to coordinate their own uh, motorcades to our rally. And that's so that we don't have to uh, inconvenience the public with this one large motorcade of two, 300 vehicles, you know. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is be able to have smaller motorcades to our, our rally point so that yeah. traffic is not congested, traffic is not stopped. We want the traffic to continue to go on. We want people to continue their movement and not obstruct traffic. So each village leader is in charge of their, their own motorcades. And we're just going to have them come over to our, our rally site at the former Guam Greyhound. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll be having our our rally at 4 p.m. It's it's going to be a great uh, a great time. In They're going to the have in the parking lot. In the parking lot at in the, the lot. at the uh, Guam Greyhound, okay. and it's going to be a really really fantastic time. It's this the lineup is just really great. You you didn't get to see it, so I, I got to see what the lineup was. I didn't get to see the lineup, yeah. but you know I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take this opportunity now to just uh, announce hey. It also happens to be my birthday. <laughs> it is a glorious day. All right. Yeah. I'm turning on. It's going to be the big 6-5 for me. <laughs> and um, uh, I, what better way to celebrate, first of all, uh, just another, another year uh, that I've been blessed by the Lord to be alive and blessed with a good family and uh, really an opportunity to be a candidate in this election with you. Yeah. Um, and I'll to celebrate with it. people that have <laughs> people that have uh, just given their hearts in, in this election. I, I'm telling you, uh, having been through many elections, uh, I, I, I can think back to the day when my father ran as a, and there I was as a middle school sixth grader, you know, involved uh, back in the 70 and the 74 election. And then, of course, running with Joada and all. But um, there's really something different here. I, I Although they say it's... You've got social media now, and things have changed. Uh, yeah, they definitely have. But I guess uh, just having been through this so many times now, um, you can really truly appreciate those that give their heart and soul. Uh, uh, and, and this is on a volunteer basis. We we are not an incumbent administration with people on a paid staff. The people that are there helping us are doing it out of their own free will. Blood, sweat, and tears. Their blood, sweat, and tears, and their desire to, to just bring about a, a change and bring in the glory days again. You got a point further up. Right? Further up. <laughs> further up. There you go. How's that? You got that. The glory now. days. Yeah, there you go. Hey, hey. Glory days. <laughs> uh, glory days, not gloomy days. And, you know, they're all looking uh, with hope for this new season, a new season of restoration, a new season of prosperity, a new season of, of life, you know, a new season where we no longer... Uh, have, are going to be shackled and oppressed, but you know, break those chains and of oppression and and live our lives and work with the business community and bring. We've, we're going to bring life back to this island. That's what I'm excited about. A yeah. lot of hard work ahead, but what started know. out with six people almost nine months ago has mm. turned out to be several hundred people now on our on our campaign. Wasn't that something that we we uh, were reflecting on today as we sat trying to catch a bit of a a, a little bit of cool air? Yeah. Uh, and hydrate uh, as we looked at our volunteers out there waving and honking and flashing the signs down to Melesu, they can look at these you know they're they're out here on their own time as volunteers and and giving of themselves yeah. um and even as we we uh wished our people well when they began their 
their canvassing work up in uh, up in Jigo. Yeah, you were you were very emotional and you almost choked and uh, I I did. Yeah, I mean, and you know, and I think that's I what did. people like and you know, is that you know they see the human factor of us, right? The human yeah. side of us, mm-hmm. and they yeah. they know that we appreciate them. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, again, a big shout out and thank you to to all. And finally, really, to all uh, our listeners, by the time you get this podcast, there's a few days. We're going into the final weekend and then Election Day on November 8th. And we just really need to ask you, participate, get involved, get out there and vote and make a difference. Vote Camacho Adam. Vote Camacho Adam. He forgot to say that. So vote Camacho (laughs) Adam. Biba. (laughs) Biba. So, on the trail, Mm -hmm. next week, we have um, what would have been the great debate, once again, uh, November 3rd is now longer uh, going to be, Mm -hmm. and um, it's unfortunate again. Is there a chance for it to come back? I mean, you know, we. Start it up again? I, I I didn't ask the producer to converse with us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was looking at you, and then he just comes and pops in and he converses with us. Like, but the question was, the question was, will there be an opportunity? Maybe we left. maybe four years from now, or or did um, Lou and Josh officially seal? Between now and you know, yeah. seal it. Uh, where, we, where we left. It, we left options. On, we left options on the yeah. table. But again, I you know I, boo I, I just saw that they were so deflated, and so defeated, yeah. um, that uh, the wind was just taken out of their the sails. Students, they, the students, the, yeah. students, the students, they were so dejected. I mean, they were so timid, and and uh, I, I I truly felt for them because you could just sense um, All they were just yeah. so frustrated. All the hard work they put into it, and then. Having to <laughs> no, but it was please. They spent since you know I I believe when hmm. they they started it since March, so the preparations that they needed to do and hmm. you know the the resources they needed and uh, hmm. coordinating for for lighting for recording for airing it what everything that needed to be done to put the great debate um, show on yeah uh, was just off or not you know it just went down went down the drain and it's unfortunate because they they truly worked so hard for it and they they put everything they had into it and yeah to just to see it not come to fruition is and i'll tell you uh, having been a participant in it uh, when i was a candidate running for lieutenant governor with joseph Ada in the 1998 election there we were against carl and madeline when i ran with uh, kaleo moylan facing Robert Underwood and uh, Senator Tom Atta, there we were, you know. And then again in, in the uh, 2006 election when I ran uh, with Dr. Michael Cruz against, uh, this time it was Robert Underwood and uh, Frank Ogden Jr., uh, the good senator. Uh, there it was, and, and it was always something that um, everyone looked forward to, the voters, the students especially. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it The was, supporters. Yeah. yeah. If, if there was any event, if there was any debate, uh, to have uh, for a gubernatorial election, it was that. Yeah. That was the signature event uh, when it came to forums or debates in any gubernatorial election. And um, but our opponents chose not to come. It was the great snub of 2022, uh, the great snub uh, against the students of the you know University of Guam and and their graduate program. Um, unfortunate, but. So I don't think there is any other opportunity now uh, with, with, with that organization moving forward with a few days left to go. It's, it would totally be unfair to them in the area and requirement of preparation and, and the like. So um, we just move on to the election. And uh, remember, I think people need to remember what happened in this event. Uh, there have been other events and other elections that um, have happened. But I think uh, right now, going into the final week, the people of Guam will not, not only forget what happened during the pandemic, and the COVID-19 and the restrictions and the executive orders and the shutdown and our lives uh, being totally disrupted and the division within the community. But they're also going to think about, um, you know, what happened with this debate. And uh, there's so many other things circulating that we didn't want to get into, but never forget uh, that, um, never forget. Yeah. And get out there and vote. Vote Camacho <laughs> I, had I had to put that in there again. Because <laughs> you keep saying, get out the vote, so... 
I'm much better. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. You know, I got to help you out here. You can help me out sometimes. It, 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 it rolls. It you rolls. can count on that. Uh, definitely. Okay. All right. Okay, your vote matters. Ten days and a wake up till a general election. Uh, early voting began on October 11th, and it will end on November 3rd, and it's currently happening at the Westin. Again, you can ask your questions through social media at uh, Camacho Ada for Guam. Engage with us on the trail by asking us questions through any of our social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Your questions can be sent to us again in text. We still haven't gotten the audio or video. I'm looking forward to the audio and video. Uh, we look forward to engaging you with you in the digital space and answering your questions on the show. Thank you so much for joining us on the trail. It's been an exciting time for both us, Felix and I, and our Camacho Ada Familia in these past uh, several months. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you to our producer, Boo, and assistant producer, Layla, for all that they've done for for us and uh, keeping us, uh, you know, writing our scripts for us, and we don't go by the script. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they say do you follow the script and we don't follow the script we just we go off the script <laughs> go off the script and i think that's you know that's all organic and it just goes to show the thought philosophy the, the, the thought process that we have how we really are are connected in seeing what ideas and how we we get through this these times and what we think about and how we we want to mm -hmm. proceed forward a lot of it, though, is uh, truly a reflection of the comments and opinions of uh, our people on Guam and, and, and as we come across and converse with them and, you know, develop and establish relationships with them. Uh, this is a reflection of them and their thought process and yes. what, what they are truly concerned about. Yeah. So, uh, and, you know, it, it always keeps us smiling. It keeps us, you know, yeah. it keeps us energetic. And, you know, they always ask, how is it that you have so much energy? It says, we... we there's no time not to have energy yeah we got to keep going yeah we got to keep moving and eventually we'll get there so yeah so thank you you can close this out now yes and you know perhaps we're going to have another we've got the final weekend coming up before november 8th and we intend to come back uh, with perhaps one final episode but i think this whole concept of this podcast shouldn't end with uh, with this election. Really? Um, ah, I think you're getting used to this. Huh? I think we're having too much fun. And, you know, uh, but here's the interesting thing is I have been approached by so many people that say, you know what? Uh, I have this topic that I would love to talk about. And could I come on your podcast? And I'm thinking, why not? <laughs> I, I, we are going to have a list of characters that we can bring in. But, you know, not just political pundits, but people, I, I believe, from walks of life that um, have issues of, of interest to the people of Guam. And um, perhaps this could be a forum for them to come and uh, begin to bring it to light. Yes. Because they don't have fair play or even access with Media. The established legacy media on Guam, whether it's print or radio, and the talk show host, mm -hmm. you know, um, we've got some good ones out there like Ray Gibson, yeah, um, you know, and 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 we've we've certainly got Bob Klitsky and a, and a few others out there. But um, I think this podcast with Tony Ada, my goodness, <laughs> they're looking forward to it. And you know, you can throw me in there if you want. I mean, why not? But uh, I, I don't know if you, know. you notice that every time it's. Felix and Tony Camacho it, it, It's not Tony. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you get it? Okay. Felix and Tony. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. But, you know, <laughs> on the podcast, though, is also listened, uh, listened to by so many of our followers and mm -hmm. so many people that want to know or get to know us. And I think today, if you can tell that story of what Fran was mentioning to you of... Uh, of uh, someone that she was speaking to about uh, supporting Camacho Ada. Yeah, not to mention names, you know, yeah. but uh, there's a certain uh, individual from Maniguec yeah. that was talking to her and she's, uh, Fran was saying, you know, why, why, uh, what, what are you thinking about? She says, you know, I'm, I'm really leaning, I'm undecided, but I'm leaning towards uh, Felix and Tony. And she says, is it, be is it because of what I've been, uh, you know, uh, explaining to you about what they represent and their platform? She says, no. I'm really like, it's their podcast. <laughs> and um, they're, I just like the way that they uh, are able to engage, you know. And and uh, I have to say, she says, um, 
I, I think Tony, you, you you've done a good job, now. <laughs> but <laughs> but the, no, the mere fact that um, that she said it, it's the podcast that um, I like the the dialogue between them. Uh, they obviously get along like brothers. Yeah, and um, we can we can understand where, where they're coming from. Yeah, it's not scripted. It's not. And she says it's because of that that I'm listening, mm-hmm. and uh, I think I'm going to give them their vote. My vote, she said. Yeah. And we truly appreciate that. And yeah. uh, we look forward for you to casting your vote for Camacho Ada. With that, sir, we can wrap up the show. Well, again, with that, you have a great weekend. We look forward to those of you joining us tomorrow at the rally. And please come help me celebrate my 65th birthday. But more than anything, we've got some great food, some entertainment. And just come out and be part of our familia. You know, uh, there's a lot at stake here. Uh, the leadership of Guam over the next four years. And again, we're going to bring up here glory days and end the gloomy days. Stuas Marcy from Felix and Tony. Adios. Felix and Tony.